Our next speaker is coming from Entity Docomo and his name is Takehiro Nakamura. And he is Senior Vice President and General Manager of the 5G Laboratories for Docomo. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me to the, this kind of very interesting uh, event on the 6Z. And uh, <clears throat> yes, much some mentioned at the beginning of this session. Yeah, it's a time to start the discussion on the 6Z now. But uh, before that, uh, for from the operator, especially uh, especially operator point of view, and uh, our industry point of view. It is very important to uh, have a more nice system, nice 5G system. And the uh, evolution of 5G is uh, very, very important than the, than, than the going to the 6G directory. So uh, in my presentation, I, I will provide our views on the 5G evolution, uh, what would be needed to evolve in the current 5G system. And then uh, our views on the maybe beyond, 5G beyond aspects. That could be a 6C, but hopefully uh, that can be included in the 5G system as a 5G evolution technologies. And the uh, operator point of view, of course, we, want, we do not want to change the system frequently. So if we can have a nice technologies as a backward compatible manner, uh, technologies uh, in the current 5G, that should be nice, so that uh, we can uh, improve our system with a uh, uh, reasonable cost. Uh, so maybe it is very important to consider the both aspect, 5G evolution and the 5G beyond. Yes. Okay, so this is our views on the uh, time schedule, especially on the 3 pp spec. Really 16 are ongoing and uh, our views on the 5G evolution. Maybe a 5G evolution, major 5G evolution should be, uh, should be prepared at the, around the 2000, 2025, uh, middle, middle year of the 2020s. And uh, that take 5G evolution technologies should be specified in the release 17 or 18. That's our views. And maybe beyond the release 18, that could be uh, uh, for 6G, for the 2030s. That's our views on the <coughs> 3GPP specifications. And also, uh, <coughs> it is very important to see the two aspects, the real and the future. And the real means uh, that we, it is very important to identify the problems, issues on the current 5G system as a real situation, real issues. But on the other hand, for the future, of course, we should have dreams. Yes. So we need to this. We need to study both aspect, problem from real and uh, dreams for the future. And uh, for that, of course, performance need to be enhanced. Uh, it, enough flexibility need to be considered to cover a variety of the uh, use cases. And the efficiency will be important more and more, I guess. Okay, so first, I would like to explain the uh, real issues, real aspect. And uh, now, we see the, uh, this is uh, our very high level observations on the 5G real issues. And uh, yeah, as you may, as you know, the, the 5G is the first generation using millimeter wave. And uh, also, uh, as you may know, the coverage point of view, that's uh, not so enough. And, uh, and also, uh, we need to challenge the much higher spectrum band, uh, higher than this, uh, 28 or 39, maybe 70, 90, or hundreds uh, megahertz, uh, gigahertz uh, spectrum band. So uh, we need to consider the further improvement or optimization uh, toward the higher spectrum band, including millimeter wave. And also, uh, we have uh, so many uh, interest from the variety of the industries now. 
And the requirements are so high sometimes, and the variety of the requirements, different requirements are provided from the variety of the industries. So uh, it is important to consider the yes, bottom of this, right? Key technical areas, issues are first, millimeter wave coverage mobility uh, improvement. That's a very, very important. And also middle uplink performance enhancements. So far, we had uh, many, many, many uh, use cases, and uh, we conducted uh, many, many tryouts with the vertical industry people. But uh, we found that uh, uh, mo many of the use cases are uplink heavy case. So uh, it is very important to consider the further enhancement of the uplink performance rather than downlink. Of course, downlink need to be enhanced, but the uplink would be more important, and we need to enhance the uplink performance. And also a high requirement for industry use cases. So uh, the variety of the use cases, variety of the requirements, and some of the use cases are very, very tough requirement. So, uh, but in any case, we need to consider that. And uh, yes, as I said, uplink performance enhancements are uh, one of the very important topic to meet the requirement from the many industry. And uh, also uh, support of guaranteed performance in uh, addition to the legacy best effort. So uh, yeah, actually uh, guaranteed uh, performance uh, required for many, many years from the variety of the industry people. Uh, one, of the ex one of the examples should be the broadcasting company. Uh, they want to use the very stable, guaranteed uh, radio network for the transfer, trans to transferring the, their video image, uh, video contents, sources uh, from the local area to the center of their, their office. So, but the guaranteed performance cannot be uh, realized so far. But uh, maybe it's a time to consider the uh, guaranteed services uh, for those kind of the industry people. Yes. Okay. And also a new type of de uh, deployment for millimeter wave coverage. And uh, now we need to uh, consider the new type of developments uh, deploying the antenna systems for the millimeter wave due to the limited the coverage or uh, uh, characteristics of the propagation. And uh, of course, small size and the lightweight base station antenna system be needed. And the cost energy efficient uh, and the program play and uh, uh, wireless that should be uh, required and the invisibility that's also required. So this is a real market uh, requirement from our real market uh, especially from the, our network operating network operation colleagues uh, really need to have uh, this kind of the solutions. Yes. So in order to do that, of course, uh, we can have uh, several uh, solutions. Like uh, yeah, so recently, we uh, we start contacted some trials, so called on, on grass antenna or a millimeter wave reflector, and so on. That that could be can be the uh, candidate to solve the issues uh, on the new type uh, deployment for the millimeter wave. And also uh, uh, industry dedicated 5G network. And uh, through the exper experience of the 5G use case trials, uh, we identify that uh, many of the use cases need the dedicated 5G, dedicated network, which uh, can be optimized for, the, for that use cases. And uh, some, some cases, uh, relatively high minimum data rate, and uh, sometimes very high reliability, and uh, low end-to-end uh, -end latency, and uh, easy temporary network deployment for event and so on. So uh, this kind of dedicated 5G network uh, concept is very, very important for the future, I think. And uh, of course, we can use the, our public network for that kind of use cases. But uh, sometimes, the, it is better to have a dedicated network, 
not using the, our public network, but a different dedicated network should be used to meet the very special requirements. So this, for that, maybe a network devices, not only the network devices, but also the spectrum band, different dedicated spectrum band should be used. Yeah, actually, uh, in Japan, we had uh, some kind of discussion on the, the dedicated spectrum uh, to be allocated for the, this kind of the use cases. So if we can, have a, we can use the, that kind of the dedicated spectrum band, that should be nice to provide a very guaranteed services. Okay, so from here, the little bit the future aspects. And the uh, left-hand side, yes, this is the 5G now. There are three use case categories. Most of the use cases can be covered by the, this kind of three use case categories, yes. But in the future, we see that uh, uh, your right-hand side, yes, it's a little bit uh, uh, difficult to understand, but the uh, uh, points are uh, maybe uh, some of the use cases uh, need a very, very special and a high requirement for the very, very specific use cases, just for the EMBP, very high data rate for just for the URL LLC, but very high reliability and so on. But on the other hand, uh, we need to, we should consider the combination of the categories, use case categories. So sometimes both of EMBB and the URL LLC features will be needed in the future. So uh, maybe both aspects, very special requirements, uh, needs, and also a combination of the use case categories need to be considered. And uh, this is uh, our rough views on the extreme target for the future challenge. Uh, this could be the maybe a requirement for toward the 6Z. But uh, of course, it is very good if we can meet this kind of requirement using the 5Z uh, technologies or future 5Z enhanced enhanced technologies. Uh, very high date rate, like uh, more than 100 gigabps. Or, uh, and the extreme coverage is also very important. Now we should better to consider the sky, sea, space, and so on. And uh, of course, extreme low energy cost and uh, low latency and, to, and very low latency and also uh, high, very high reliability, massive connectivity, especially in the massive AI devices will come. So this kind of the uh, target should be considered as a 5G evolution and beyond, maybe beyond, yes. And uh, future use cases, maybe uh, it is uh, still unclear what kind of use cases will come in the, in the 2030s, but uh, clearly the super high quality real time VL, AL, XL uh, will be needed and the broadband URL LLC for flying mobilities. So uh, many companies are now trying to develop the flying car or something. So uh, uh, we need to cover the, our future services for the flying mobility. And the massive IoT for anything, anywhere. And uh, as I said, the sea, space, sky, we need to cover. And also a device cluster concept uh, free from the battery charging. And uh, maybe we will have a variety of the devices uh, with, with us. And, uh, but the, we don't want to connect the many devices by the wireline, of course. So uh, uh, we need to consider some kind of the uh, wireless connection for the device cluster. In that case, the, our smartphone or uh, other devices can be the hub uh, for the variety of the devices in the future. And the spectrum aspects, and uh, we studied a little bit, and uh, for the, especially for the future, and uh, okay, from the top, red part is uh, uh, to be allocated for the 5G, uh, 28 gigahertz band. Green part would be the uh, potential candidate for the near future 5G band, especially in Japan, uh, 39 gigahertz band. That has already allocated in US, I know. But, uh, and also uh, 47, 50 gigahertz, uh, that could be a good candidate. And uh, these are depending on the WRC19 outcome. And also blue parts, uh, interesting spectrum band for the uh, 5G evolution. And uh, potential candidates are just 66 to 71, and 71 to 76, and 81 to 86. These three bands are 
could be the very good candidate for the uh, 5G evolution and the beyond. And also our bottom part, yes, not heavily used in Japan. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know that the other regions, other countries, but uh, potentially uh, uh, good candidates for the uh, long-term future study, yes. Okay, and uh, AI devices, AI technologies, uh, that's of course very important. So far, the many uh, speakers uh, explained uh, on the importance or uh, high expectation on the availability uh, use of the AI technologies. And uh, AI for RAM, it's ongoing in, even in the 3CPP, and uh, we should uh, uh, study more and more and uh, the in very interesting topics. And uh, in the future, massive AI devices will come, and uh, D2D or UE cooperation uh, will be more and more important. And, and so on, yes. And also, uh, we should better to consider some variety of the integration of the non-cellular wireless technologies. And uh, yes, from the business point, business model point of view, it's a little bit tricky part, part but uh, maybe uh, it's a time to consider the integration uh, with the other industries like uh, satellite industries and the broadcasting industries. And also uh, integration of the other non-cellular systems, uh, wireless LAN, NFC, and, uh, and so on. Uh, maybe uh, we should better to consider to have a good ecosystem for the future. Okay, and also uh, integration of non-wireless communication technologies. That should be a very interesting topic since uh, camera information or uh, wireless charging, uh, energy harvesting, that could be an uh, interesting point. Okay, so, and next, and uh, this is the uh, future radio technologies, very high level, and uh, super long range broadband, that will be needed for the future, even for the sky, even for the, on the sea, or even in the sea, yes, we should consider to cover as a cellular coverage. And also, uh, left the bottom, uh, new tech network topologies uh, should be considered. This could, uh, for example, the relay or much hop by the devices, uh, and also including the device cooperation to cover, to, uh, to improve the coverage of the, our system. And also uh, distributed for the dedicated network and a uh, variety of the network topologies need to be considered to cover the variety of the use cases, I think. So uh, some, case, some case, maybe everything have to be uh, on-premise. Uh, or in some cases, uh, we should integrate the uh, RAN and the core and so on. Maybe uh, we need to have a flexible network configuration or topologies. And also massive MIMO need to be improved, enhanced. And also positioning, yes, as a uh, previous speaker mentioned that positioning is, will be a very, very important and uh, more high precision uh, 3D positioning will be needed. Okay, so uh, this is summary and uh, in any case, the performance efficiency, flexibility, everything need to be improved and uh, need to be considered for the future. Okay, so that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Takahiro. Now, time for questions. I have one question to warm up the audience. You did not mention in your presentation the forthcoming Tokyo Olympic Games. <coughs> and, and, and as we have seen before, that acts, Olympic Games act as booster for releasing new gadgets, technologies, and so on. Can you say something about what is coming in, in, in Tokyo next year? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but the Tokyo Olympic Paralympic game will be held uh, in 2020. It means that clearly that is the initial 5G, not the 6G. So <laughs> for this conference, the Olympic Paralympic is not so <laughs> related to the, yes. So that reasons why I did not include it. Yeah, but of course the uh, Olympic Paralympic is a very, very important event. And if, for us, the, it's a great chance to promote our 5G services, yes. And uh, yeah, my colleagues are working so hard to develop the very excellent uh, services to be provided on the 5G systems. And also uh, we, are, uh, we, are this, we are preparing the 5G network. And uh, of course we cannot deploy the 5G nationwide manner from the beginning. So we need to select the, the areas, yes, to deploy the 5G, especially uh, Olympic Paralympic facility. 
Paralympic game uh, facilities are, of course, the very important area to deploy the 5G. Yes. But no, no 6G at the Olympic, Paralympic But timing. something at the new fascinating frequencies above 100 gigahertz, maybe? <laughs> mm. Okay, we will try. Yeah, actually, we, are, we, are, we have already started uh, some uh, trial project with Nokia Sun on the using the uh, 70 or uh, 70, yes, 70 gigahertz. Yes. yes. So maybe we can show something by that time. Okay, now questions from audience. There's one hand up there. Thank you. Um, Zhu Hu Li from Samsung. Uh, you mentioned uh, beyond release 18 could it be considered a 60. So when you said that, um, are you intend to say, for example, release 19 can be start of 60 or are you saying, okay? Yeah, could be, but <laughs> could be. But uh, um, of course, we need to discuss on the discuss with the 3 pp community, communities, including you, <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, potentially it is 19, 20, could be the 60 specification. So yes. you don't have a very concrete plan yet about not time? Yet. Not yet, yes. Thank you. Yeah, for the moment, we, we, sh we need to focus on the 5G evolution one more. <laughs> Then I, I guess I can understand your point is that uh, TPP can start discussion about 60, maybe after this 18. So until this 18, we better focus on 5G evolution, right? Yeah, yeah. Other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. So Preben must have something very interesting coming up. Thank you, good morning, and uh, thanks a lot for the nice uh, presentation. I just have a question which is related to a previous one on sustainability of the ecosystem. In 5G, we see now that there is a certain move uh, by the operators to consider more and more um, infrastructure sharing and sharing of uh, resource uh, for deployment and to minimize the cost. Do you think that this, this will be a kind of driving factor for the future as well and that in the future the deployment models of 6G or whatever comes be, uh, behind uh, will be much more shared than it is today with much less infrastructure competition? Yeah, I think that it's uh, uh, becoming more important to consider Yes, actually, uh, in Japan, Japanese market, we we don't uh, have a sharing network almost, but uh, only the tunnel uh, case that uh, we share the network among the operators. But uh, other areas, we have uh, our own network facilities. So, uh, but for the future, of course, the, maybe we should better to consider the network sharing more and more, even in the Japanese market. But I don't know that the uh, clear views and the clear, uh, we don't have any clear plan to do that. Um, thank you for the very nice presentation. So when in the past we have defined a new D, it has been back, non-backwards compatible. So when you put 6G in release 18 and beyond, do you have a view on, would this be backwards compatible or do you think this would be non-backwards compatible to 5G? And it's somewhat related to the ecosystem and investment by operators you somewhat introduced in the beginning. Do, do you have any view on when is it, let's say, economically feasible to go for a non-backwards compatible generation to 5G? Yeah, from operator point of view, of course, the, the, we want to improve our system by the non-backward non compatible, uh, backward compatible manner, so that maybe we can minimize the cost to 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 enhance our system. But uh, in case that uh, may, maybe we will have some limitation or restriction to improve the system, uh, in case that we we need to consider the backward compatibility. In that case, the, maybe we should consider the non backward compatible uh, approach. But uh, we need uh, uh, 
justification to deploy the non-backward compatible technologies in, in terms of the maybe performance uh, gain or something. Yes. Okay. Thank you again, Takehiro. Thank you.